you can change boundary conditions also by making uh, different uh, geometries. So if you imagine that you have a that you have a substrate, which is let's say uh, rigid, and then on the top of that you have a thin film that is like this, and you have another thin film that is like that. This substrate is much thicker than a film. Uh, I'm not uh, drawing it nicely, so it looks like uh, it looks like uh, so it's a it's a very thick uh, substrate, and then when you calculate. Uh, piezoelectric, you deposit uh, uh, two films, one which is more uh, flat and the other one which is uh, more uh, long, tall, uh, and you, you measure piezoelectric coefficients, you find out uh, that this one, even though two material, the two samples are made under exactly the same condition and they have exactly the, they are made of exactly the same material, uh, this one will have a piezoelectric coefficient much bigger than this one because here you have this clamping of the uh, uh, film by the substrate, uh, which doesn't allow it to deform uh, as much as this one, which is almost free. And here you have uh, uh, examples of these. Uh, this is uh, piezoelectric, so-called piezoelectric hysteresis. Let's just look these values at the intersection. So for this film, we have a much lower piezoelectric coefficient than the than the one for uh, for a tall uh, uh, a film, let's say a skyscraper uh, film, uh, because the coupling here is much uh, coupling uh, the clamping here is much div the diverse uh, is uh, much uh, reduced. Uh, there are other tricks you can do. Uh, if you consider uh, this case here, blue is uh, active film. And this is substrate, uh, which can be much, much thicker. Uh, typical values for a substrate are 300 microns and the film uh, 100 nanometers to one micron. Uh, however, what you can do is uh, you can make a hole below the film and that hole can be made with, uh, uh, with etching and so on, uh, so that the film is partially released uh, that there is a less pressure from the substrate uh, in the uh, in the film, and uh, uh, then you can have a much more uh, uh, much more uh, uh, movement deformation. Also, when you deposit a PZT on a substrate, uh, that is usually done at high temperatures, and as you cool down. Uh, because of the difference in the thermal expansion of the film and uh, of the substrate, uh, you will have that there will always be some strain, uh, usually compressive uh, on the film. And that compressive strain may prevent, for example, ferroelectric uh, domain walls to move in the film. And therefore that will reduce the piezoelectric effect. Uh, you can release that stress also uh, by, by the same way that I just mentioned, you drill a small hole, uh, you then uh, etch this material below the film until it is released and uh, that internal clamping, that built-in strain uh, that happened during cooling of the film from high temperature to low temperature will uh, also be reduced. And here you can see it. This is this hole uh, below the film. So it looks, it looks, like, it looks like this. So uh, uh, there are different types of stresses that you can have. The stresses that are produced uh, by the rigid substrate and the impossibility of film to deform when you apply measuring uh, field or uh, material uh, can have stresses uh, that are result of thermal expansion, uh, uh, mismatch between film and uh, 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 and, and the substrate, and that may clamp uh, domain walls, uh, make film uh, 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 less likely, uh, uh, 
less susceptible to, to changes in dimension. And uh, these can be alleviated by, by, by releasing film from the substrate or drilling a hole uh, below that. Uh, now, uh, if you have a substrate which is uh, comparable, which is uh, flexible, uh, even a very thin films may be able to deform it. And uh, uh, this is a known problem in thin films that you, uh, that the substrate will bend uh, when you put electric field on uh, piezoelectric material, and that makes uh, uh, measurements of a two of a three of a true D33 uh, coefficient, for example, uh, very, very difficult because uh, you will not have only the formation of the film under field, but you will have uh, uh, due to that deformation of the film bending of the whole substrate. And uh, one way to, uh, to eliminate uh, uh, this uh, movement of the substrate in your calculations is actually by measurements. You use uh, optical interferometer and you shine light uh, both uh, on top and the bottom side of the film. Uh, uh, actually uh, on the top side of the film and uh, opposite side of the substrate. And if substrate bends, uh, uh, that will give you much uh, larger displacement. However, uh, this side of the interferometer beam uh, is sensitive to both bending of the substrate and uh, the formation of the film piezoelectric coefficient, while this one here, uh, where there is no film on the other side, uh, is, is sensitive only to the formation of the substrate. So if you combine these two signals, you can uh, derive from them uh, a true piezoelectric uh, uh, effect in the film. Uh, so you can eliminate bending, but you still have these stresses which will reduce, which will clamp uh, film. So in general, in thin films, you have uh, that piezoelectric coefficient is reduced uh, to about half of what you would have in a free film or in a, a bulk uh, sample. Uh, this sort of uh, uh, experiment uh, depends uh, very much also on the width of the electrodes and it turns out that uh, there is an optimal uh, uh, diameter or size, lateral size of the electrodes uh, to reduce these uh, extra effects uh, uh, by, by, by some amount. So usually you have to do some finite element modeling to understand this. Uh, one doesn't have to use a double beam interferometer. Uh, our friends in Singapore have developed a different way of doing that. Here you see substrate uh, and uh, this here is uh, a deformation of the piezoelectric film under uh, electric field where bending of the substrate uh, has been eliminated. Uh, when you make a film on a substrate because of the thermal mismatch of a substrate and, uh, uh, and the sample, there will be a lot of stresses in the sample. And if your material is ferroelectric, then as you will see later on, uh, that material will uh, develop into domains to release some of those stresses, but stress in general will be inhomogeneous. And here you see uh, illustration of these non-homogeneous stresses uh, or strains uh, in the films. Those strains can be very large. They can be in the hundreds of megapascals and uh, are, uh, can be strong enough to even shift Kiri temperature of a ferroelectric material by very large uh, amount. And that has been illustrated here using phenomenological theory by Sasha Tagaintsev, uh, while uh, this here uh, slides are by Beatrice 
no aid, I think, in nature materials. Here you see a phase diagram of a barium titanate. Uh, at zero stress, we have a, a phase transition, which is around 100 degrees in the barium titanate, about 120 to 130 degrees. Uh, but when you have uh, uh, large stresses uh, that temperature, uh, kitty temperature can increase uh, and with a large enough stresses, uh, this increase can be measured in uh, hundreds of uh, uh, degrees. And in some cases, uh, you can even induce uh, new phases uh, by, by these stresses. Okay. Uh, uh, I already mentioned electrode film configuration. This is very important and usually has to be for any specific uh, material has to be uh, modeled uh, to find out the optimal size of the electrodes for your problem. Uh, uh, the diameter of the electrode, uh, how much of the film or the membrane, if you work with the membranes is covered with the electrode is also very important. And again, that's uh, uh, one of those uh, uh, aspects of a thin films, which one has to uh, consider. Uh, so uh, I will now discuss uh, addition of uh, uh, higher order terms. Uh, so we can add uh, magnetic uh, terms. Uh, so this would be piezomagnetic effect. There is such thing. Uh, we can also add uh, magnetostrictive effect, electrostriction, which is uh, electromechanical, uh, but not piezoelectric. This one depends on the field square. Uh, here for a direct effect, you can uh, have electromagnetic uh, magnetoelectric uh, effect. Uh, uh, ma uh, magnetoelectric materials are materials where magnetization can be controlled with electrical uh, means uh, and the other way around. And these are really very interesting and very important, uh, would be very important for uh, applications if you can change magnetization with electrical field. Uh, usually to produce electrical field, you need uh, very big equipment, coils, it's uh, power, uh, 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 it consumes a lot of power, but with electrical field, if you can do it, it would be much easier. However, we don't have good magnetoelectric materials at room temperature. Those materials that are best uh, have this electromagnetic effect uh, uh, strong uh, or reasonably strong only at very low temperatures. Uh, now, a trick how to have magnetoelectric effect is not to have uh, one material uh, to be both sensitive to electric uh, and mechanical uh, uh, fields, uh, but make uh, uh, composite of several materials. And uh, uh, I will give you some examples uh, of, of that. Uh, the same equations are given here, uh, written in uh, uh, tensor format, and I just wanted you to uh, have that. So how would, uh, uh, how can we make magnetoelectric uh, coupling uh, not in a single material through this magnetoelectric uh, coupling where you apply field and you get uh, polarization directly uh, through this effect here, uh, but uh, by uh, making a material that, uh, uh, that have phases which are uh, sensitive to uh, electrical phenomena, uh, another one which is sensitive to magnetic, and then we have something, we need something to link uh, those to make this uh, coupling. Uh, and uh, that's usually strain. So you can have piezomagnetic effect where you have that strain produces magnetization. Then we can have magnetostriction where magnetic field produces strain and we have piezoelectric effect where strain uh, produces uh, electric field. So uh, if we have uh, 
magnetization coupled to strain and polarization coupled to strain, then we are strain, we can affect magnetization by polarization and polarization by uh, magnetization. And I would like to show you uh, an example of this. Uh, so this is by Dw Dw Dwight Wieland uh, and his group uh, where they made uh, very sensitive magnetic field uh, sensors that go over uh, something like uh, uh, 10 uh, and more orders of magnitude in a linear in a log log scale linear in a log log scale so here i'm plotting induced magnetization and here uh, uh, sorry this is induced uh, uh, magnetoelectric uh, voltage so this is magnetoelectric uh, electric effect, uh, how does it work? So we have magnetic field coming on a sample, which whose amplitude we want to measure. It comes to material that has magnetization and then through magnetostrictive effect, uh, it changes uh, dimensions. Uh, and uh, if it changes the dimensions, that means that it will uh, affect this piezoelectric material given here in orange, which is supporting these green uh, magnetic materials. Uh, so, uh, uh, since uh, the green material uh, will change its dimensions, it will apply, in fact, some kind of a stress on the piezoelectric material and that will, through piezoelectric effect, uh, uh, produce, uh, produce uh, charge. Uh, and therefore, we have a magnetoelectric effect, which is mediated by strain, uh, which is common for uh, uh, both of these magnetic and uh, piezoelectric uh, materials. Uh, you can do this with other uh, coupling of the properties just by making a composite. Uh, you can couple properties uh, indirectly uh, by mediation of some other property. Uh, next, I would like to uh, discuss electrostriction, but we will leave it for the next time because I would also like to use that opportunity to induce a uh, piezoelectric uh, effect in non-piezoelectric materials. And that will then lead us to answer these questions, which materials can be piezoelectric. We stop here. <laughs>